Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. So, all of the Jump Festa news has wrapped up. Also, side note, I really do appreciate all of the support. I almost forgot to say that. Thank you all so, so much, and I hope you're having a very relaxing holiday season. So, now let's try that again. Jump Festa news is all rounded up, and I want to go over just some of the big things that was discussed. I'm not going to be going into, if these fucking ads would stop, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be going into, like, every single little thing with, like, Rush Duel and Master Shits and dual linky boo boo stain you know the, the those those games are garbage like cross duel and all that 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 stuff's garbage you can go look that stuff up in your own time um <laughs> i want to talk about some of the interesting cards that came out of this and uh some just new support that came out first of all i want to talk about this arm neos homeboy is holding a pokeball look at this he's like i'm ready to catch your ass <laughs> So now we got a Yu-Gi-Oh card that's got a Pokeball, and we ourselves got our little flaccid, totally not hard at all, uh, Ultra Ball. <laughs> so I think this is actually really cool. If for anything, like, the card isn't all that great, but the fact that, uh, yeah, it, it, Pokemon has collided with Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I, I wonder how much they had to pay to get the rights for that. I mean, it like, you can't deny that's a Pokeball. It is literally a Pokeball. So this is coming out of the Secret Utility Box. It's called Arm Neos. The sleeves look kind of cool. It's Zeus, like whatever. So this is Arm Neos, level 10, win warrior fusion effect monster with 3,500 attack points and 3,000 defense. It requires element to hero Neos plus one armed dragon monster. Keep that in mind as I talked about that in yesterday's video that it just takes any armed dragon monster. And with Neo space, if for whatever ungodly reason you're playing that trash, uh, Arm Neos would become 4,000 attack because it mentions Neos in the name. Don't play Neo Space. It's trash. Uh, so must be Fusion Summon. No shit. Uh, if this card is Fusion Summon, you can choose one Dragon Monster in your graveyard. So any Dragon Monster. Destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls with an equal or lower level. Okay. When this card destroys a monster by battle, you can make this card gain this effect. During the main phase quick effect, you can tribute this card special summon one Elemental Hero Fusion Monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. My guess is that if for whatever reason someone's actually playing this card, they'll go for the, what is it, the Nebula Neos, that when it sends itself back, it like banishes everything or shuffles everything back. In that regard, it's kind of cool, but the problem is it's actually got to destroy a monster in battle, and like, from all of the other hero support that we've seen as of late, heroes just want to be able to OTK the opponent. I mean, they've got so many cards that increase attack and let them attack multiple times in OTK. You know, what they need is Omni Negates. Now, the fact that this says one arm dragon monster, you can use dark arm with this. You can obviously use any of the armed dragon support, but you can use dark armed dragon because it's a armed dragon monster. Any monster that has the word armed dragon in its name, you can use. You know, obviously people will probably use like armed dragon thunder level 10 and stuff so you can pop monsters that are level 10 or lower. Um, that type of application is interesting. At the same time, it's only when it's special summon. It's not a once per turn thing. So on the special summon of armed Neos, he's going to, basically use <laughs> use this friggin' pokeball to you know toss it at all your monsters and just pop them away so this card's really really cool it's going to be interesting to see what the tcg does with it whenever we eventually get it i would expect this to be like a secret or an ultra rare and like a future course set uh speaking of support cards out of uh what is this here cyac that's uh the set after photon hypernova uh cyberstorm access we have teller knight in con stellar support so this is a throwback if you played back in, like, what is it, 2011, 2012, when we had Constellars and Teller Knights running around? So this is Teller Knight Lyra, level 4 Light Warrior Effect Monster, 1200 attack, 1600 defense. This card is always treated as a Constellar card, which is interesting because back in the day when we were first on the cusp of Teller Knights and people were like, okay, are we going to be able to use them with the Constellars or are Constellars and Teller Knights going to be their own thing? Now they're finally combining them, as I feel like they should have done back in the day. I guess they were afraid it was going to be overpowered. Uh, but it says here, you can only use the first and second effect of this card in each once per turn. If a Teller Knight and or Constellar monster, other than itself, is normal summon to your field, you could special summon this card from your hand. If this card's summoned, you can add one Teller Knight spell from your deck to your hand. Teller Knights aren't really known for their spells, from what I can recall off the top of my head. Um, they're mostly known for their trap, which is an Infernity Barrier, and it's a counter trap. Um, other than that, I'm not thinking of any spells, although I think they have one that's like a Rota. I could be wrong. Um, that... I mean, if this card can get it to your hand, I mean, that that's totally fine, especially with now that you can finally play Constellars with this. I mean, 
Teller Knights were always known for being a good rank four toolbox deck. So now that you'll have the Constellers that are also a good rank four toolbox, it's going to be interesting to see what this deck will be able to do once we get Cyberstorm access. Then we have Teller Knight Altea, level four light warrior effect monster, 1700 attack, 1300 defense. Obviously, it's treated as a Constellar card. That's hot. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card's summoned, you can target cards on the field up to the number of light and dark exceeds monsters you control. Pop them. Teller Knights and Constellars, in case you don't know, are known for having uh, some dark, but I believe mostly light exceeds monsters. If a Teller Knight and or Constellar monster monsters other than Altea special summon your field, you could special summon this card from your grave. Also, you cannot declare an attack for the rest of this turn except with, C with exceeds monsters. That's fine because you're going to be a rank four toolbox deck anyway. Uh, and then we have Teller Knight Constellar Cadacious, Cadatus. It's a rank four light spellcaster exceeds effect monster, 2500 attack, 1650 defense, two plus level four monsters. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card is exceeds summon, you can target a Teller Knight card and or one Constellar card in your graveyard, add them to your hand. So right out of the gate, you're committing, let's say, two level four monsters to this, and you're going to be able to get back up to two cards from your grave back to your hand. That's pretty good. You can banish one Teller Knight or Constellar monster from your hand or deck, then detach a material from this card. This effect becomes that banished monster's activated effect when that monster is normal summoned. So you can banish something like Altair and then use that effect of Altair to get back a Teller Knight. That's pretty disgusting. Or you can summon the Teller Knight that uh, is like a Foolish Burial to dump one to grave. This Exceed has some interesting applications. And I'm, I'm honestly really excited for this Teller Knight support because I think it's going to honestly bring them up to a rogue deck. So then we have Teller Knight Constellar, Continuous Spell. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. When this card resolves, you can special summon one Teller Knight or Constellar monster from your hand or graveyard. Uh, you could target one Teller Knight or Constellar Exceeds monster you control, special summon from your extra deck one Teller Knight or Constellar Exceeds monster with a different rank from that monster you control by using it as a material. It's treated as an Exceeds summon transfer of the materials. Um, this spell is disgusting, and the fact that it's got both Teller Knight and Constellar in its name just ensures that you're going to be able to search with any sort of Constellar or Teller Knight card. This continuous spell is going to be, I think, what really pushes this deck over the edge. Um, uh, maybe I'm going out on a limb here, and it's going to depend on what kind of ban list we have at this point in the game's lifespan once we get cybernetic, uh, almost said cybernetic impact, but, uh, cyber, cyberstorm access. I don't know why people want to say cybernetic. Cyberstorm access. Um, which again, this will be out after Photon Hypernova. So we're talking like, geez, like, uh, almost a year from now, like six, seven, eight months from now. Um, so yeah, do keep that in mind. So we'll, we'll be another ban list or two in at that point. Uh, let's see. Then we have, uh, what is this thing? This is the holographic rare for Cyberstorm Access. This is probably going to be like a secret rare or like a starlight. This is uh, Sword Emperor Tasuga Maga Suganagi the Thing. <laughs> it's a level 11 Wind Warrior Spirit Effect Monster with 3,000 attack and defense, level 11. Cannot be special summoned. You contribute some of this card by attributing one normal summoner set monster. That's fine. Spirit monsters can't be special summoned anyway. If this card is normal summoner flip face up, activate this effect. Your opponent can send any number of cards they control to the grave, and if they do, each player draws an equal number of cards. During the end phase of this turn, shuffle all cards that are banished on the field and in the graveyards into the deck. Once returned during the end phase that this card was normal summoner flip face up this turn, return this card to the hand. It actually looks really sexy, honestly. I think it's that quarter century rare thing. Um, so right out of the gate, this card is honestly kind of insane, but the problem is that you're going to have to tribute one normal summoner set monster, and as far as I know, spirit monsters don't really have a way to summon multiple times in a turn, um, so that's a thing. On top of that, I mean, your opponent can send any number of cards they control to the grave, and then each player draws. I mean, if they already have a way to negate this big thing... Or to destroy it. I don't really think they're going to let that go through. Oh, excuse me. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm super tired tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and then during the end phase, it shuffles all cards that are banished on the field and in the graves into the deck anyway. I I don't know. The fact that it's a spirit monster, uh, I, I, I just don't know. It benefits from the spirit monster support. And on top of that too, I mean... When you're looking at spirit monsters as a whole, their boss monster is arguably what? Yamato Dragon. So making another boss monster for them is not really like a very high ladder that they have to climb. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to wait and see what happens with this card. Finally, last but most certainly not least, the set after Cyberstorm Access is Duelist Nexus. We're probably going to get this set in like a year. It's the April set for the OCG 
So you're probably about a year in change, maybe, before we get this. Don't expect to get the quarter century secret rares. It replaces the usual prismatic secret rares, um, OCG equivalent of starlight rares, but I don't think we're going to see that here in the TCG. Um, if it does happen, don't expect to get any sort of announcement with it. I think Konami's just going to kind of pull our pants down and say, surprise, like they did with the starlights. Um, but what can we expect out of Duelist Nexus? Well, I think it's really funny that we have a simulator called Dueling Nexus. Um, makes me wonder if Konami's going to shut down that, uh, that particular, uh, what do you call it, in simulator uh, for Yu-Gi-Oh! Since, you know, Duelist Nexus copyright infringement. I don't know. It's a possibility. But uh, I really have no idea what to think about with Duelist Nexus. Maybe it will be a huge explosive set like Rise of the Duelist, Duelist Alliance, Duelist Revolution. I don't know. Any set that has had the name Duelist, though, has been an amazing freaking set. You know, we're talking Duelist Alliance, Duelist Revolution, Rise of the Duelist. Uh, I can't even think of any others off the top of my head. But the point is that those three sets I just mentioned were very, very amazing sets. Duelist Alliance, to this day, still, I, I would say, is one of, if not the best set of all time in Yu-Gi-Oh! next to Duelist Revolution. So, guys, let me know what you think about all of this news down in the comments below. What are you most excited about out of this Jump Festa? No news about a new Master Rule. Of course, people are still going to be clickbaiting the shit out of that. I saw that going on last night on YouTube. So, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.